In today's video we're looking at the Roussard 20mm f5.6 lens. Let's take a look. Hello, welcome back, Matt here. So today we're looking at another lens, the 20mm f5.6 Soviet lens called a Roussard MR2, dating back to 1958. So what can I tell you about this amazing little lens? This lens dates back to 1958 and is often called a Biogon clone. So when we get to the eBay section, sometimes you'll see this listed as a Biogon clone because it has a similar optical formula to the Biogon and the Leica 21mm Super Angulon lens. This is a single coated lens design manufactured in Leica thread mount L39 or LTM and also contacts RF mount. If the video camera will focus, this lens has a close focus distance of 0.5 meters. And it's worth noting this is a non range finder coupled lens design, meaning you need to scale focus by looking at the, the, the distance scale on the lens itself. If you're using like an M camera, if you look through your viewfinder, when you turn the lens, the range finder patch will not move. The great news is with this wide lens, if you set the distance on your lens to 0.95 meters, at f5.6, everything from 0.95 meters through to infinity is in focus at 5.6. So you can pretty much set it once and shoot all day and never really miss. If you want to shoot at closer subjects, maybe set it to 0.7 meters and then everything from 0.5 meters through to just over one meter is in focus. This lens has a 48 mil filter thread and I found this from toying around myself. This lens will accept 52 mil push on uh, lens caps. So, so here's a 52 mil Nikon lens cap, which fits perfectly. Yeah, this is my go-to lens cap for this lens. The lens design means that the aperture scale is on the inside of the lens with the widest aperture of f5.6 through to f22. This means if you have a filter fitted, you need to remove the filter before you can adjust your aperture. Because this lens is recessed, you don't really need a lens hood. That helps to keep the size really small. Early lenses until the 1990s were silver, and then from about 1992 onwards, they were black. Depending on your copy of the lens, many of the lenses will be able to tell the year of manufacture from the serial number. But on this particular lens, you cannot do that. I purchased this lens as lens only, so I didn't get the finder that comes with this lens. I'll bring up a picture to show you what the Roussard viewfinder looks like. And the advantage of using a Roussard finder is many of them are parallax corrected, meaning if you're focusing close, it's going to adjust your, your view. Personally, I enjoy using Voigtlander finders, so I've got the 21 to 25 Voigtlander Brightline finder. Hopefully you can just about see the bright lines on the, the viewfinder. If I just take the finder off for a second, you'll be able to see the, the true beauty of this lens. If I put my hand there, hopefully you'll see it. So the reason I bought this lens partly is because I was looking for a 21mm Biogon, like a thread mount version or contacts RF mount version. And then the second reason I bought this lens is because I wanted a super small 21mm like a screw mount lens. And as you can see, on a like a thread mount camera, these just look absolutely amazing. I'll come on to some alternatives in a second, so bear with me. If I take the lens off the camera, you can see the rear element. Can you see how deep the rear element is, being a wide angle lens? Having a large rear element has two problems. One problem is how it affects your digital photos. And number two, it won't fit all cameras. So this will not fit my lights or like a Minolta CL, the film camera. And it's said to also not fit a like M5 if you're like a M5 shooter. I'll just pop it back on. Another reason I bought this lens, this lens weighs 95 grams. That's 3.4 ounces. That makes this one of my lightest lenses. And similar to the Orion 15, if you've not seen that video, this is an aluminium build, making it super lightweight. If you like the idea of this lens by the end of this video, but you prefer the 28mm focal length, definitely check out the Orion 15 video because the Orion 15 is like a twin to this lens in terms of the style of the lens and the style of the photos that it gives you. Uh, I really like both. So now you're thinking cheap Soviet aluminium lens, this is going to be a cheap lens. Sadly, unlike many Soviet lenses, this is not a cheap lens. This lens costs around £400 in the UK as at April 2021, but nearly all of them are outside of the UK. So you'll need to add at least 20% VAT to import it. And in the US, they list around $600. So as I say, this is a Roussard MR2 released in 1958. In 2014, Lomography then teamed up with Zenit to release the new Roussard Plus, as they called it. This is a lens designed by Lomography, as I understand it, 
and produced by Zenit in Russia. The main difference is, as I see it, between the Lomography newer version, the new Roussard Plus, and the original Roussard. The new Roussard is a multi-coated lens, whereas the Roussard I have is a single-coated lens design. The new version is brass built, whereas the old version is aluminium build. So my lens doesn't feel very like-alike, whereas the new one's supposed to be extremely nicely made. Lomography modified the lens design, giving you almost zero distortion on the new version, with an aim to use a new lens with digital cameras. Like the old version, the new version is like a thread mount, but it also comes with an M-mount adapter, so you can fit it onto your like M10, like M240. The cost of the new version, if you can find one in stock, is £500 or $650 as a straight conversion from pounds to dollars. Now I know I'm doing this in a bit of a strange order, but what about the look of the lens? The look of the lens depends on whether you're using it on a digital camera or a film camera. So my preferred setup is my Leica 1F or Leica 1C. These are strange cameras in that there is no viewfinder and no rangefinder. The Leica 1C and the Leica 1F, as I understand it, are the lightest Leica thread mount cameras, which is why I bought them with the one of the lightest lenses and then a reasonably light if a little bulky 21mm plastic Voigtlander viewfinder you have a ridiculously light setup. The reason I like the setup is because I wanted a lightweight camera for say running, cycling, hiking where it didn't matter if it was being bashed around from vibrations from the bike or jumping down a mountain or what, whatever whatever may be happening. The problem with true rangefinders is if the rangefinder gets knocked, it gets knocked out of alignment and then you have to pay to get your rangefinder recalibrated. The beauty of having a camera with no rangefinder is you no longer have that worry anymore. Um, this lens would also be excellent on the Voigtlander Besser L. Again, if you've not seen that video, check it out. The Besser L is even lighter than the Leica 1F. It's not quite as beautiful. And it's the same idea in terms of there's no viewfinder, no rangefinder. So yes, what I was getting to is I bought this lens to shoot on film, but let's just look at digital. If you shoot this lens on digital, you can have purple fringing, especially on the right hand side of your photo. Here is some JPEG shot with a Leica M240. And you can see the, the purple edging, especially on the right hand side of the photo. If you shoot this lens on digital again, you also are going to have very heavy vignetting. It seems that the heavy vignetting is especially on the left of the photo, but it's kind of heavy vignetting across the image, just especially on the left. Those seem to be the main differences for me between shooting on film and shooting on digital. When I shot it on film, this was on Foma Pan 100. Obviously it's film specific, but with this particular film, I found the contrast to be moderate moderate to good, as they sometimes say on the, the weather forecast. Um, not high contrast and also definitely not low contrast. And I found the sharpness to be acceptable, but not kind of definitely not clinically sharp and definitely not as sharp as some of my other lenses. I did manage to get the lens to flare on film and you can see the spot of flare across the image on this photo. If you want a 24mm lens for digital, I probably would not recommend it because of the purple fringing, but if you do want to use it on digital, you can use the app called Corner Fix, which will fix the colours at the edges of your, your frame. So if I now go back to sharpness and contrast, the difference between this lens and the Voigtlander Coloscope R 24mm f4 lens, which I've already done a review of, the Coloscope R gives a modern, high contrast look with great sharpness, whereas the Roussard gives a more vintage look with lower contrast, lower sharpness, but great tonality for black and white. As you know, I love my size. If we just go back to the size again for a second, here I have the Voigtlander Coloscope R 21mm f4 mounted on the Besser R4M which has got the built-in 21mm frame lines. Again, check that video if you want to see this camera. And here we have the Roussard. So the Roussard lens is flatter and it's lighter. So then if we now go back to price, we said this was £400 or around $600 average price for the Roussard. You can get yourself a scope R for around £430 new or around $420 new used. <laughs> uh, so. You need to decide, I guess, what is important to you. If you want modern high contrast, maybe look at the scope R. If you want super duper lightweight and more of a vintage look, maybe look at the Roussard. 
if you really don't care about the size of your lenses. Another amazing lens is of course the Zeiss Bygon ZM 21mm f2.8 and I've also done a video on that lens so again check that one out. The Zeiss Bygon ZM has absolutely amazing rendering, I would say slightly better than the Scopar. So because the Russo is called a Bygon clone, the rendering of this lens is more similar to the ZM Bygon than it is the Scopar. In conclusion, if you want the best 21mm contrast and rendering, get the ZM Bygon. If you want something small with high contrast, get the Scopar. If you want something small with low contrast, get the Russo. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you use a Russo yourself or a Scopar, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you again tomorrow. Bye.